Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to run our first regression in Excel. To keep things as easy as possible, we're going to start out with what we call simple regressions. Simple regressions estimate equations with just one explanatory variable. This means we have two variables in the equation. We've got our dependent variable y and explanatory variable x. Since we're talking about a relationship between just two variables, we sometimes call these bivariate regressions. Because there are only two variables, we can also represent simple regressions on a two-dimensional graph, where you'll see once we get our estimates, we've figured out the equation for a line of best fit through our data. I'm going to frame our whole discussion in the context of an example. Suppose that we have a client who is a restaurant owner who wants to estimate the demand function for their product. So we're going to help them out by collecting a data sample from various other restaurants serving similar products, and then we'll try to come up with an estimated demand function. To follow along, make sure you've got the demand.xlsx Excel file ready to go. The demand function that we're going to estimate looks like this. We've got our dependent variable quantity of x demanded, and on the right-hand side, we've got our determining function right here, beta naught plus beta one px, so px is our explanatory variable. And then of course we've got epsilon, our error term, which contains all of the other factors that might influence quantity demanded that are not price. Up to this point we've talked very generally about equations where we just had a y and an x, but those, remember, are just names of variables. q here is our y and px is our x. We're now going to jump over to Excel and run our first regression. I've loaded up the demand Excel file. And I'm on the first tab here called data1. This is our data sample. The variables we're going to be interested in right now are q and p. Before we get going, we need to make sure we've got the data analysis tool pack installed. To do that, we're going to go to File, Options, and then we'll click on Add-ins. Now down here where it says Manage, we make sure that Excel Add-ins is selected from the drop down menu and click go. This will bring us to a screen that we just need to make sure that analysis tool pack has a check mark next to it and then we click OK. Once we've done that we'll go up and click on the data tab in the ribbon and all the way on the right here there should be a button that says data analysis. If that's showing up then you've set this up correctly. Click on data analysis We've got a bunch of different options here, but we're going to select regression. Click OK. This brings up a new box that is going to ask us to enter in our data. When it says input Y range, that is going to be our dependent variable or left-hand side variable, which in this case is going to be QX. I've clicked right there on QX and I'm going to hold down Control Shift down to select the entire column. Now I click on input X range, and I'm going to do the same thing, but now for my price. Control shift down to select the entire column. The next thing I need to make sure to do is to check off this box right here that says labels. This tells Excel that the top row of each column is the name of the variable, as opposed to another piece of data. Now I'm going to click OK to run the regression. This is going to generate a table showing the results of our regression. In the demand Excel file, I also have a tab that says simple reg right here. You can click on that to verify that you did this correctly. If we zoom in here on our results, what we want to focus on right now are these numbers right here where it says coefficients. The coefficients are our beta hats. Where it says intercept, that's our beta naught hat, and where it says px, that is our beta 1 hat. This is not saying that px, the price of x, is negative 9.5. It's not saying that at all. It's saying that the slope of this line is negative 9.5. So if the price goes up by 1, then the quantity will go down by 9.5. That negative relationship should make sense because we're doing a demand function. There is a negative relationship between price and quantity demanded. 
Once we have those numbers estimated, we plug them back in to our equation and we have an estimated demand function. QXD equals 4,279 minus 9.5 PX. That should look a whole lot like a basic demand function that we've worked with up to this point. In the last video, I talked about Y hat being the predicted values based on our estimates, our beta hats and X. The Y hats are going to all be points along the estimated regression line. You can think about this as the best guess for what a Y would be, given that we know an X. Of course, we know that X is not the only thing that influences Y. There's still the epsilon out there, right? There's still a lot of other factors, for example, that influence quantity demanded that are not price. So naturally, when we run a regression, our regression is not going to capture everything. There's still some variation out there in Y that we can't explain just with our single X. We define the amount that our regression missed as the residual, which we call E. And for any individual observation I, the residual is EI. So if we want to calculate EI, the amount that the regression missed, we take the actual observed Y and we subtract the Y hat. In some cases, the prediction will be too high, so Y hat will be bigger than Y i, so E will be negative. But in other cases, we might underestimate, and Y i hat might be below Y i, and in that case, we would have a positive residual. Before we jump back into Excel, I want to make it clear that the error term, denoted with an epsilon, and the residuals, denoted with an E, are not the same. I deliberately use a Greek letter E and a Latin letter E because they are similar. The error term, the epsilon, that's the effect of the unobservables on y in the population, whereas e comes from our regression and comes from our sample. e tells us the variation in y that went unexplained by the regression. Later on when we talk about bias, this difference is going to be important. For right now, just understand these two definitions and that these two things are not the same. Now let's go back to Excel and calculate some residuals. The first thing that I'm going to do here is take my coefficient estimates from the regression and copy and paste those over into our data sheet just so that we have them. Now I'm going to calculate our QX hat. These are our predicted values based on the estimated equation. Remember that Y hat is beta naught hat plus beta one hat times X. So translating that over to our demand example, it's going to be beta naught hat plus beta one hat times PX. So I'm going to take beta naught hat, that's this one right here. I'm going to put a dollar sign on the row number so that those stay the same. Now I'm going to take plus beta one hat, again putting in that dollar sign right here, times PX. So this is going to give our predicted quantity based on each price. You can see that for our first observation, we predict that if the price is 164, the quantity demanded will be 2,718. You can see that that is not the same as the quantity that we actually observed which was 3,114. There's the difference there. That's to be expected because our regression doesn't have all the information. All it knows is what the price is. I'm gonna click on this cell and then double click on the corner here to fill these formulas all the way down. For each observation, you can see now we have a predicted quantity demanded that we can then compare to our actual quantity demanded. You can see that sometimes our regression does a really good job and gets really close, other times it doesn't. We can now calculate the residuals, our E's, by taking the actual observed Y minus the predicted Y, or in this case, quantity, and then doing the same thing, filling this formula all the way down. This is going to tell us how much did the regression miss for each individual observation. We can see that sometimes it gets close, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it's high, sometimes it's low. We can also ask Excel to calculate the residuals for us. 
by going back to the regression screen and then selecting this box right here that says residuals. Otherwise everything else stays the same. I've run the regression now and we can see that there are a list of the predicted quantities and the residuals right here on the regression screen. We can compare that with what I just did to verify we did it correctly. Looking at these numbers, and then looking at these numbers, we can see that they are in fact exactly the same. 